Hey, what's up? And welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 6, Episode 2. Today we're talking about Tales from the Hood from 1995, directed by Rusty Cundiff. I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Welcome to the Dumpster. We're back with another anthology movie, Joe. I'm loving it. More uh, anthologies, please. Could not wait to talk about this one. This one's been in the pipe for a while. Yeah. Um. I know. I know. Some of you dumpster dwellers have been waiting for this episode, and here we go. We're we're giving it to you hard and fast. Uh. But first, if you're watching on YouTube, do us a favor. Give it like. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. You know, I know everybody and their mother tells you to hit the like and subscribe button, but it really does help. We'd really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, share share this video after you're done watching it. That would be great. You don't want Mr. Sims coming after you. <laughs> uh, if you're listening to this episode, uh, give it five stars in your podcast app of choice, please. And uh, I think Spotify might do the thumbs up also. You you can rate it on Spotify. Uh, you can rate it on Apple Podcasts, definitely, and Google Podcasts. Wherever you get your podcast, there is some type of rating system. Yes. So, you know, hit that. Whatever the highest one of that is, definitely. And leave a review. We love to yes. hear from you, too. Uh, and we also have Patreon content that is associated with this. Uh, we have a commentary track coming out, or it may be out by now, for New Jack City. Yeah, that's going to be as, a good one. As part of our look at black exploitation films this month. Uh, we also have a watch along coming out for Don't Be a Menace. Don't know the full name, Joe. Help me out. To South Central while you drink your juice in the hood. There you go. And uh, we'll also have a mini sewed for the $2 tier on Bones. And uh, we also have a junk mail that had just come out at the beginning of the season here. So we're kind of just. Getting everything rolled out. This is yeah. kind of the new normal. This is the new normal. You're going to get two main episodes. Yes. You're going to get a mini soda on Patreon. You're going to get a junk mail on Patreon, depending on what we get. Yes. If we have stuff to show. Um, and you're going to get a commentary track on Patreon and a live watch. Live along. watch along. Four, five, and ten tier. And we do also have a ripe review of Shin Ultraman. Uh, again, the, the the release schedule on that either is coming or is already out. Yes, so check but the, that out. But you're at least going to get one ripe review too. Yes, yes. So uh, for 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 the for the free content. Um. By the way, if you're listening on your podcast app, you might have noticed that there are ads on yes. the episodes now. You can get your episodes, your audio versions of this show, ad free for two dollars a month on that Patreon. So and you and you also get the minisodes and junk mail. So it's yeah, like exactly a, you get way more than just the uh, the episode if Being you sign up. Free, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So with that being said, let's jump into Tales from the Hood. Yes. Uh, now this is my first viewing again. This is I one can't I don't know. Believe that it's just one I just never got around to. Really? You know, always saw the, the cover. Always kind of jumped out. It's so fucking iconic. Yes, dude. yes. This VHS. I remember seeing this in the store. You couldn't keep me the fuck away from this. <laughs> I, it's, I get it. it's 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 a it's a, a the holographic glasses and not everything. holographic. It's just like a shiny. It's like a chrome. Yeah, I don't even know what the fuck you'd call that. But like, it's all reflective and shit. It's like a, a skull, gold, a gold tinge almost. Yeah, like uh, yes, sign me up. I'm picking this up and I am watching this for sure. I'm renting this, which I did. Uh, but I'm glad I watched it. I guess yeah. is 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 my point there because this was a lot of fun. Um, I think it's a blast. And like, I remember the trailer for this specifically. And it had that cl the classic trailer voice on it, like the guy who oh. talks like this. Tales from the hood. Chill. Or be chilled. I mean, I don't need to be hearing this, man. The music and stuff in that trailer, I just remember so vividly. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, I, I got to see this, this horror movie. Um, but also uh, at the time, you know, Tales from the Crypt. The, t the the resurgence of the t or the the I don't want to call it a remake, but like uh, well, the right. television show because there was the one from seventy two, oh, yeah. the Amicus one from seventy two, but um, which we'll talk about in a second. Okay. Uh, but uh, the the HBO was had the Tales from the Crypt show on at this time when this when this was out, um, which was re now this movie was released in theaters, but when it came to video, it was released by HBO Video. And Savoy Pictures. Huh. Yeah. So, so does it actually have a relation to Tales from the Crypt then? No. Well, Or just happen to be HBO well, coincidentally. Yes, but no. Okay. Which we'll get to. Oh, okay. Uh, basically, the, the relationship of this and Tales from the Crypt is the fact that uh, Rusty Cundiff and uh, Darren Scott were fans of Creepshow okay. and Tales from the Crypt and Twilight Zone and the Amicus uh, anthology movies. Sure, which which 
totally shows in the film. Yeah, oh, big time. Um, and speaking of Amicus, you know, we didn't mention it at all uh, at any of those rev- uh, anthology movies on the Creep Show episode because it was just a packed episode. And I really yeah. wanted to focus on that. And I know that I said that uh, Creep Show is the best anthology movie, and I still stand by sure. that. But it's not the first. There's there's so many. There's so many, but like Amicus is responsible for it. Well, actually, Dead of Night was the kickoff, right? And right, that right. was in 45, I think. Something um, like that. And then Amicus put out Dr. Terror's House of Horrors and uh, Tales from the Crypt. And there's so many. Uh, the uh, the House that Drip Blood, Torture Garden. Um, you know, there's a ton of well, good the, anthology movies that Amicus had put out predating Creepshow. Sure, and there's there's stuff that's even around Creepshow or more modern, like we've talked about before, like... I think it was Cat's Eye was well, one. Well, there's Cat's Eye, yeah, but I'm talking I mean, specifically no, yeah. leading up to... Yeah. Sure, sure, but I'm just saying there's also just anthology films in general are just always kind of fun to look at. I oh, guess yeah. just to piggyback off of what you're saying, I suppose is what I mean. I'll, I'll like go. We, we, we did Body Melt, which is kind of a uh, yeah. anthology. I mean, not not in the pure sense of like this or Creep Show. It kind of feels like But it. if you break it yeah. down, it kind of counts, it kind of counts. Um, I'll go out. I'll just put it right out there. I think... I think um, Anthology movies are my favorite movies. Okay. And we talk a lot about that on the the Talks from the Dark Side show, sure. uh, which is back now. Go check it out yes, every yes. Tuesday, baby. Um, and uh, Creep Show and on and like, I don't know. I just have a connection to these things, and I and I like. And we we've talked about it a lot. Oh yeah, we've yeah, talked yeah, about yeah. it oh, at, yeah. at nausea. <laughs> I, I, on the yeah. creep show episode and Talks from the Dark Side. No, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Might not be my favorite, but they are really fun. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's. I think the most fun about it is being able to tell different stories in a short capacity. Yes. So you get like five little movies instead of one big one. Well, and a lot of stories work you, better like that. Yeah. Well, especially when you include the wraparound. And I like the way yeah. they do the wraparound in this one. You don't just get it at the beginning and it's kind of like after each segment, you kind of come back to it. And like, yes. All right. What's the next part of this puzzle of, of Tales from the Hood? The way that they structure it is really yeah, cool. Which we'll talk about. Um, but yeah, if you're new to the show and, and this is your first rodeo with us, uh, this is the second season of the or the second episode of the sixth season. But uh, what we do is we we tell a little ba- uh, backstory behind the scenes, uh, the trivia's, if you will, and then we talk about the movie. Um, this movie scared the shit out of me as a kid. By the way, I could see it. Um, it has all the hallmarks of the things that really scared me, uh, like dolls coming to life and like yeah. Um, Zombies, zombies, and 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 uh, um, going insane, or yeah. having like a psychosis thing, like yeah. like really weird kind of shit sure. like that. But like as an adult, I can appreciate all the themes that we're going to talk about in this, yeah, because it it, it melds them together really well. Mm-hmm. Um, the the social political commentary with the horror movie, and that's the best way to do horror. In my yeah, opinion. and there's a lot, in and there's the a film. lot, yeah, but not. Not in a bad not way. Not in a bad but way. And not as heavy handed as, say, I don't know, Disco Godfather. <laughs> Weirdly <laughs> enough. Yeah, actually. So this was actually born out of a stage show that Rusty Cundiff uh was putting on at the time. It was like a it was like a well, one act stage play. Hmm. Uh what was it called? It was called the the Black Horror Show. And Darren Scott, actually, I forgot to grab it. Can you do me a favor and grab me offspring? The are the offspring off that shell off the shelf, please. Thank you very much. I forgot to put this out on the table because it's relevant. It's also another anthology movie and it has Vincent Price in it. But it was also written by Darren Scott and directed by an MDU alumni, Jeff Burr. Um, now, Jeff Burr! now, this movie was is was like if you try to look this up. Yeah, it's from a whisper to a scream. That's oh, okay. the anthology. Okay. But uh, for whatever reason, they when they released this uh, on tape, they called it The Offspring. Okay. Clue Gallagher's in this. It's very good. Hmm. Um, but so so with uh, with Rusty doing that stage show and uh, Darren doing The Offspring and like or from a whisper to a scream rather, and writing from a whisper to a scream, they got together and they made Tales from the Hood because hmm. they kind of just melded together because. Uh, Darren had a very strong knack for like all the horror stuff. Okay, and where uh, Rusty had more of the political driven things behind it. But when they got together, peanut and, butter and chocolate. Yeah, man, peanut butter and chocolate, and like it <laughs> melds very well, and they worked really well together. Yeah, and that's how this movie came to be. But another thing that I love, um, of course, that we talk a lot about is the special effects, and this is a fucking cocktail of 
effects houses because the coolest one of the coolest things about Tales from the Hood is that they treated each segment um they wanted to give it a different flavor so mm-hmm. they hired different effects houses to do each segment smart which i thought was fucking cool so we got k and b kicking ah, up in yeah. here for um for the for the for the asshole cop one okay. we got screaming mad george in here for the devil effects at I, the saying, end. I thought i saw kyoto's name sprinkled in there somewhere yeah well scream mad george does um the stuff with the uh, david allen greer segment okay. and he does the the stuff with um the devil at the end mm. and uh the kyotos do all of the doll stuff and the stop motion oh, and shit okay so and then kenneth hall uh kenneth oh, okay, j hall yeah. excuse me um you probably best know him. Well, I best know him for writing Puppet Master because sure. I fucking love that movie. But like, he's also the special effects um, supervisor for this movie, so oh. he's doing a bunch of shit uh, in this, which I thought was really cool. And Mike Deke is even in there. Like, th- th- there's, really? Yeah, there's just like so many fucking people in this, like getting together and, and the sprinkling uh, the goodness all over it, um, and it feels really good. Yeah, I would say that I don't really have a problem with any of the effects in this film. I no, they're it's, fucking like, great, consistent throughout. Yeah. And the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about was um, the sequels to this movie. I saw that. Okay. So 2018 and 2020. Yeah. Which is pretty removed from 1995. I'm going to go out on a limb here before you say what you're going to say and say, is this or, or, or take a guess, I guess I should say, is this a creep show three situation? I don't know because I'd never seen them. Oh, okay, okay. Also, I, I forgot to mention before, but this is also produced by Spike Lee. Now, here's the thing. Yes, I saw all that in the credits. Now, here's the thing. Tales from the Hood 2 comes out in 2018. I've never seen it. All right? Keith David is now playing Mr. Sims, which we'll get to. Um, okay. So inst- instead of uh, Clarence Williams, it's now Keith David playing the Mr. Sims character. But I could see it. But... Rusty and Darren come back to write it and direct it and Spike Lee fucking produces again. So maybe it's good. then. Maybe it's good. I don't know. I've never seen it. Then Tales from the Hood 3 right. comes out in 2020. So okay. It's a very quick turnaround. So, on that one. so pretty quick, I, I would say. But now Tony Todd takes the plate. Now, he doesn't play Mr. Sims in three, but he's more he's the narrator. You know, he's the, okay. the host, if you will, in that one, which is also written and directed by by Rusty and Darren and also produced by Spike Lee. So the team stays together for the next two sequels. Well, I guess which is pretty impressive at the very least something to at least check out or maybe whether in our own time or on the show down the line, if maybe they'll be good if the the original people are mostly involved. Yeah, I don't know. I've never seen them. Hey, let us know in the comments if you've seen Tales from the Hood 2 or Tales from the Hood 3 or both. And, you know, do they do they stack up to the original? Are they as good as it? Or are Uh, they at least close? Are they worth watching? Like, I don't know. I'm open to the idea. I just can't really comment on them because I don't know too much, but I wanted to talk about them a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you want to plot crunch this or do you want me to plot crunch it? Oh. I, I'll plot crunch you. Yeah, okay, so, go ahead. Go for two. Here we go. Uh, so, so basically, <laughs> your setup is that the, uh, the these three guys, three gang members, uh, a, a bull, bulldog stack and ball. Yeah. Uh, they come up to this funeral home because they have some business to take care of. Uh, and you're introduced to Mr. Sims, who basically takes us on this journey uh, as he kind of shows these guys, these different people in uh, their caskets and tells them, well, how they died as he's walking them around this funeral home, which seems like for for eons. And the means to the end is the shit. The shit. Uh, yeah. Well, and, and the point is, each story is a, a different anthology or segment in the anthology. Yes. And then we kind of uh, it all comes together with a bow on it at the end. <laughs> so right out of the gate. We get this really cool intro that I really like, and there's like it's like this skeleton, and there's like the like, oh like yeah shot to this like fucking skeleton that's like all that has like sunglasses and like a gold tooth and a fucking <laughs> yeah. gap. It's kind of cool, and uh, the score is so fucking good, dude. Chris Young is kicking up here, man. Um, it's really good. Um, and if you don't know who Chris Young is, he did the the iconic score for Hellraiser. Oh, okay. Yeah, Chris Young's great. Yeah, we the- got to meet him. Chris and I met him at the Count Basie Theater when they did a show in oh, really? Hellraiser. He was so cool. Hmm. He was like, I remember meeting him at the bar. Like we like went down and we like saw him and we were talking to him and we were like at the bar and he like signed my DVD or whatever. But we were telling him at the time we were talking about Field of Screams and like producing all the shit. 
And uh, he was like, yeah, he, he like gave us his phone number oh, and his wow. email I was like, yeah, hit me up if you <gasps> if you need like a score and stuff. I'm like, holy shit, I might, I might hold you that, Chris. I'm coming I, for you. I, I mean, he knocked out of the park in this film and yeah. I think all, all the licensed music and this is really good also. Yeah. Uh yeah, so so they go into the funeral home and they're talking to him and they want they want their stuff, Joe. They're not the stuff; they want the shit. The shit, their drugs or whatever it is. It's drugs that they're trading for money <laughs> is the point. And he's like, "Oh yeah, I got it, I got it. It's it's in this other room though. But first, let me tell you about this guy in this fucking casket. <laughs> the way that this but, guy Martin, I I think that's a disservice to the fact like how we're introduced to Clarence Williams because they go yeah, up they're, they're, no, they're, you're they're, right, they're yeah. the, they're, they're there at the Sims uh, funeral, funeral home, home or whatever. They're all going up there and they're trying to like work up the courage to go up because they're kind of scared oh, of it. Yeah, but, no, like, you're right. They're yeah. also being fucking tough guys about it. Yeah, that's that's a good point. And they're all fucking. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't be smoking a fucking joint going into a spooky joint like that. Joint smoking a joint? Yeah, that's a good point. Well, yeah, but like getting all fucking high and then getting going into some scary place? I don't think so. I might have to get high to go into a scary place, but <laughs> really? I, I feel what you're My saying. My fucking senses would be like, oh, I'd be like yeah. jumping at everything. I, I need that extra boost. Yeah. Um. So so Clarence Williams like pulls the fucking thing up and scares the shit out of oh, these yeah, guys. Yeah. And the one dude, Stack, fucking runs into like a signpost and fucking knocks himself yeah. out. Oh, yeah. It's, they gotta give him medical attention yeah, when he's brought great, in. great, man. So they bring him inside. They give him ice and shit. And then he's like, all right, where the fuck's the shit? And he's yeah. Like, the shit? The shit. Oh, uh, yeah, the shit. And he's like, yeah, the drugs, motherfucker. He's like, ah, the drugs. Yes. And he's like, well, how about I tell you this story? He's like, I don't, we don't want a fucking ghost story or nothing. Right. And, and, and just for, let me clarify, I said Martin. It's Clarence in, in the uh, casket. Martin is a key Key character in the yes. story, though. Oh, later, yeah. An MDU icon, actually, well, believe Clar it or not. Well, Clarence Williams. Yes. Is what I meant by Clarence. But I'm saying the character that is in the casket yes. is named Clarence. Yes. That is a little confusing. I get what you're saying. So let me, let's back that up real quick. Clarence Williams plays Mr. Sims. We will here on out refer to him as Mr. Sims because there is a, a character, character named, named Clarence. Clarence. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. That's a good point. So he opens his casket and he tells a story about this guy, uh, Clarence. Yeah. And there's like lessons or like things that he like tells them about the story of this dead body before we kind of jump into right the, uh, the sure. segment yeah so this first segment is called um rogue cop revelation Woo! this is a heavy one man yeah, i mean man. a lot of these are, are kind of rough but this first one they yeah. just literally just start going in you know right for the fucking jugular they jump right into it um and anthony griffith it, plays clarence yes. he's a new cop he's a Cop on the beat, um, and he's teamed up with uh, not Richard Brake, <laughs> not Richard Brake, Michael Massey, baby, yeah. uh, who plays Newton. And they roll up on Wingshauser and Dwayne Whitaker. So these scumbag cops have uh, Mor Martin Morehouse pulled over, who's like this uh, councilman for the town, and he's basically cracking down on like crooked cops and like cops that are selling drugs and shit. Yeah, and he, you know police brutality against you know black people and stuff like that so they're like yeah no yeah your tail light was out and they smash it oh, yeah, with the fucking you know billy club and everything and fucking wings hauser and Dwayne whitaker like beating the shit out of this guy like fucking with him yeah. like big time it, it's also of note clarence is black and that's kind of plays into it later but they're just like yeah uh ignore this go look up his car to yeah, make yeah. sure it's not stolen run his plate yeah and he's like uh okay so when he goes to do that they like this is like one of the I remember this like as a kid it was like it's even it's even fucked up now but like it really like made me feel like it's very impactful this part yeah they beat the shit out of this guy and this fucking they music, smash his fucking head into the mirror wings like throws his fucking head through like the window yeah and then they're like beating the shit out of him and it's all to this like uh old old blues tune yeah I don't know who it is but um yeah it's uh to cut the tension, though, uh, you, you know who this is, right? Who? Tom Wright. Thanks for the ride, lady. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> Mr. Ben, ben Dover. Oh, no, it's Ben Dover. This man can't die, as we're going to find out shortly. Oh, my God. He, that's okay. That's it's what, literally the same actor. That's what happened. Creep Show 2. That's what happened. Yeah. Right? He, he. you know, we, we were talking about, like, he was on the side of the road. Right. We did a commentary track on Patreon for Creepshow 2 for, yes. for reference. Yeah. For, to, to tie this up, go over to Patreon, listen to the Creepshow 2 commentary track. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking, like, 
he wasn't like a bummer or anything on the side of the road. Like he actually in the, in like the hitch, was a hitchhiker. The hitchhiker. Segment. Yeah, 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 but like he he under his under his raincoat, it was like a Gucci raincoat. <laughs> yeah. and he had like really expensive clothes. His car just broke down. down so the yeah, road. it was this. It was like the alternate timeline yeah. of this situation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this it happened again. <laughs> he broke down, but this time he got fucking murdered by the police. Oh my god! Or he might as well have been because then, uh, you know, rookie cop Clarence comes out and he tries to stop him, but really doesn't. And no. they're just like, "Yeah, don't worry about it. We're taking him to the hospital. Don't sweat it." Yeah, we need to get you to a hospital. So him and Newton like drive off, and um, Wings Hauser and fucking Dwayne um, <laughs> Dwayne Whitaker like put him in the car. And drive him to this dock. To the docks. And he's like, and Wing Hauser's like, by the way, yep, the fucking cops are selling drugs, you piece of shit. And he like shoots him up with like, I don't know what, heroin, I guess. Heroin, yeah. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you're never going to tell anybody. There goes your legacy because we're going to make you out to be a drug addict piece of shit. And they fuck, they throw the fucking like two kilos in his trunk and they drive him off a fucking dock. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Flash forward a year. Clarence is now a drunk. He quit the force. He couldn't handle the pressure. Just... The he conscience. Because he, he had a guilty conscience. Because they, yeah. like the other cops are like, yeah, you know, the number one rule is, you know, you don't tell on other cops. Like no matter what. And he's yeah. like, oh, uh, yeah, but this is fucking ridiculous. Obey the code. But he he basically keeps hearing this voice in his head, I guess, over the course of literally a year, I guess it's implied, uh, of Mr. Martin kind of yelling. Bring them to me. Yeah, he's having, he's like, you don't know if it's like, like Jacob the, Marley almost. You kind of, you don't know if it's like the DTs or some shit. <laughs> And he's yeah. just like all fucked up, and he ends up like bringing Wings Hauser and yeah. uh, Dwayne Whitaker and um, not uh, not Richard Brake, Mike uh, Massey to the fucking <laughs> to, to the, the graveyard. graveyard to the MDU graveyard to yeah. the MDU graveyard. They wave this Uncle Sam. Hey, how you doing? Uncle Sam's over there. Lionel's mother's being pissed on, and yeah. now of uh, now somebody else is getting pissed. Unfortunately, on. Martin's gonna get pissed on. So <laughs> the plan is, so so Clarence is there. And he's yeah. like, I brought you all. He's like, Wings House is like, what the fuck did you bring us here for? He's like, it's the anniversary of the time that you killed that fucking guy. And he's like, you motherfuck. So we didn't kill him. We, we didn't, didn't kill we him. We didn't kill nobody. What are you talking he about? He jumped out of the car. We don't know what happened to him. So they, so he convinces these guys to like go to his grave. Right. And the plan is. But they're like, yeah, yeah Clarence ain't making it out of here. M- Mike Massey and Wings House are going to shoot Clarence in the fucking head and leave him in the, fu- in yeah. the uh, cemetery. So they go to the grave. And Clarence is like, yeah, I don't know what to do now. Like, I brought him here. Now what? Wings Hauser goes over and fucking pisses on this guy's grave and then makes Dwayne Whitaker do it. Yeah, like forces him. Like, oh. you got to do it, too. He's like, I don't got to take a piss, man. I just left. I, I, I pissed before we left. And he's like, go piss now. Yeah. And he like makes him piss on this fucking guy's grave. So Martin finally comes back from the dead and grabs this dude by the cock and like smashes his fucking head yes. into the headstone. Where, and pulls where they him, just piss, by the way. And pulls him underground. Yes. And he disappears. Literally. Like yeah. quicksand. Yeah, it's awesome. And then this fucking zombie bursts out of the ground like with a fucking massive explosion, uh, more or less. There's a huge explosion of sand and dirt and everything. And Dwayne Whitaker's like in a casket with yeah. his fucking heart ripped out. Uh, and the zombie's like, there with like the heart. Holding it. It's fucking great. And this zombie looks amazing. It looks so good. Left his sign in the in the casket, though. I love uh <laughs> I love his voice. Yeah. And like how it booms and shit. And, and it's kind of like a traditional zombie with mm. teleportation powers, because that's that's what they're going for here. <laughs> it's really, it's really good. It's done really well. I think it's better. I think this is a better zombie than the hitchhiker and zombie, the, which was just funny that he played that character in both. Because I couldn't stop thinking this is a better, I this is a better version of that idea in yeah. Creep Show too. <laughs> even though they are only slightly similar. I don't think I don't think Stephen King was thinking uh, had the mindset. No, of, uh, clearly not of crooked cops and affecting the black community. But yeah, looks like a black guy, huh? Uh, so they try to get the fuck out of Dodge, and this thing, like it just was kind of saying, starts teleporting around. Like it gets behind them, even though they're like speeding past it. Oh, there's teleports a great, into the car. It's a great car chase yeah. thing where they're like crashing into shit. He, uh, Martin, like the zombie, like puts his hands into the fucking roof and pulls Wings Hauser out and rips his fucking head off. You just get the fucking blood shooting out of the neck. It's kind of <laughs> great. And Mike Massey's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> He gets it the worst. Well, I mean, fuck him. Who cares? Oh, it's but great. He's he's running away. Well, first he fucking shoots the car and it like explodes. Oh, right. Well, and, right. Which is pretty awesome. Well, another thing of note, just before we, we wrap up this segment, they do shoot him. And he's a zombie, so it does yeah, nothing. Yeah, it doesn't work. 
But anyway, so the, the zombies chasing him through this like park or whatever. And then like because of I guess he shot him up before he was killed yeah. to make him look like a drug addict. Yeah. The zombies firing these like the blue Raj out of mystery men at this guy. Oh, these man. fucking needles hitting him into a wall. Yeah, but like the the zombie like Martin like picks up Mike Massey. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And like he like rips his chest off and there's like a crack pipe inside. Oh yeah. And then he and then he like levitates the fucking uh, hyperdermic needles and like pins him to the wall in like a on a crucifix speaking of creep show yeah oh man the last shot is he fires one down his fucking throat like into his <laughs> mouth and he fucking melts yeah. into the wall and then becomes a piece of the graffiti well right because that's part of it there's this graffiti of yeah. this art of uh martin when he was alive yeah. and it's just like then he's part of the picture and everything is cool yeah well it's like it's there to symbolize the fact that like he was responsible for it and like this crooked cop like you know and yeah the graffiti there was to, to to like be a part of the community and like how this guy was really helpful to it. No, he like was. That. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and his uh, image was, was ruined. Yeah. Completely. So he picks up fucking Clarence who, who thinks he's like, he's like Scott okay. free. Like, wow, we, 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 we fit. We solved that. We're You're good. good. You're all good. Right. And he's like, you motherfucker. He's like, yeah, yeah. Why didn't you help me when I was alive? And he's like, ah, <laughs> I don't know. So he now he's in an insane asylum. Yeah, this well. ends like a Lovecraft story. He's in an insane does. asylum and it gets pinned on him the three deaths of these cops and now he's like in there for life. It's great. It's a really good one. Uh what do yeah. you think of the, what do you think of this one? I think it's great. Yeah. It's really uncomfortable, which again they're clearly that's what they're going for. Especially like the I gotta beat tell you down something. this guy gets Ugh. and the, the head smashed into the fucking driver's side mirror. And that everything. makes me fucking cringe every time, Ugh. dude. And like yeah. the blood cascading yeah. down, almost like, like like almost like the crown of Christ or something like that, thorn crown. Yeah. Mm. Uh it, it's like fucked up, man. But like they get their just desserts, and that's kind of what you want to see. Even even the guy who thought, like, well, I, I didn't help, but I felt bad about it. It's like, well, no, you still didn't help, and this man still was framed for all this, and you just did nothing. Yeah. But but lose yourself in the bottle. Yeah. So, and you, so you're you, not you're not getting off either. Like, even though you blamed yourself or whatever, you still didn't do anything about right. it. Right. Just because like, you were the rookie. That means shit. Yeah. It's kind of great. Uh, yeah. I'm probably going to say this a few times in this sure. review, but like the way that the social and political message is like put through on this one with the um, supernatural element is really fucking good. Now, we said this at the beginning, but the way that this film blends and the way that it's written, the way that Darren and Rusty wrote this, um, the way that it blends both things, mm. it puts the humans as the monsters first. And we talk about that a lot oh, yeah. on like other anthologies and stuff, but th then it has like sort of like a supernatural element to it, whether it be the resolution or, or the comeuppance rather. Right. Yeah. But, um, that's a fucking real scary thing that happens all the time. And it still happens. Uh, yeah. So, it, but to like, see it like that is oh, like yeah. really, and, uh, and it's fucked played, up. It's played hyper seriously. Yeah. It's not like it's played it's for not a goofy. laugh at all. No. Like, this, but this film was pitched as a fucking goofy thing because they, the, the uh, Savoy didn't want to have any political message running through it. it like in the advertising, nowhere near as memorable. I would say, I but I guess, a, I guess we don't know. A lot of people didn't see this when it came out because because of that because they wasn't, thought it was like some stupid uh, thing. That's a shame. Yeah. Anyway, it's really good, and I, I think this segment uh, is very good. Yes, and then we uh, we kind of cut back. We kind of get a little uh, in between with Sims and the, and the boys, and then he says, "All right, yeah, uh, follow me, follow me." Right, to where's this the shit? Oh, the shit! I mean, this is like fucking Piccolo leading Majin Buu around the goddamn <laughs> temple so that Trunks and Goten could get a few more minutes in the fucking. <laughs> The, what was the hyperbolic time chamber, yeah. for God's sake? This guy's like going in circles around this funeral home. Yeah, you know, the you know, shit, it's this way. And he like takes him downstairs. Yeah. And he comes across another casket. Yeah. And this time there's like this burnt mass of shit in it. And they're like, what the fuck happened to him? Now, this one's prompted by them. <laughs> well. This story's prompted by them. This thing's pretty fucking disgusting well, they asked, looking. And they're like super like curious about yeah. this morbid fucking slop in front of them. So um, he's like, yeah, let me tell you about Walter. Let me tell you about Walter. And, uh, you know, Walter has a good perception of reality and fantasy or something like that. W Walter's a mutant, by the way. Yeah. 
<laughs> FYI, <laughs> Walter. Does like, he know Roland? Is he? Is he? Is he? Ah! Was he one of the characters from yesterday's Target that wasn't uh, featured in that film? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's. I think that's the, the, yeah. the case. Yeah, yeah. Michael McDowell's looking for him. Yeah, absolutely. Season one, folks. <laughs> Daniel Baldwin film yesterday's Target. Look it up. So this this segment's called uh, "Boys Do Get Bruised." Yeah. Ah, oh, man, another tough one. I don't think any of these aren't a little tough. This, yeah. Again, this one deals with like domestic abuse um, and with monsters at home. Yeah. Well, the personification of monsters, literally um, and real the real life monsters um, and how this kid like perceives what's happening. Right. You know, uh, it, I mean, he straight up tells his teacher that his dad's dead, but a monster lives at home. So I, that's, I guess, his coping mechanism, yeah. uh, I guess. But but yeah, this kid Walter, he's new in town, and uh, or at least new at the school. Yeah. Well, we open up and we see like him in his room. Oh, with the monster. And you hear the monster like coming up the stairs and like opening the door. Yeah. You see the arm. You see the you see the Rendell the fucking hand come in. Yeah. Yeah. But to to what I was saying, he's a new student, and then like on his first day or some shit, first week at school, he's getting the crap beat out of by this other kid. Yeah, like he's introduced everybody and we get introduced to Richard Garvey who actually is, who's the teacher and he that is a the, Rusty uh, Cundiff. Yeah, the director. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he goes outside for recess and this kid Tyrone beats the shit out of him. But the key point is when they go to like kind of look over him after the fact, he's got this massive fucking black eye. And they're like, yeah, that's a few days old. That yeah. wasn't just from the other kid beating on him. And, uh, what's going on at home? And Mr. Garvey's like, you know, did you did your mom do that? Did somebody at home? Did your dad do that? And he's like, oh, my dad's dead. Right. Well, that's when he says that. He's like, yeah. it's a monster that comes home sometimes in my attic. And it's not scary. It's, <laughs> there's a monster in my house. Basically. Yeah. yeah. And, and then like. There's even a scene a little after this where like the monster comes home and it's like a r- not to make light of it because it is very intense, but it's kind of like our Dobby uh, uh, video from fucking uh, oh, yeah. Into the Snow yeah, kind of. with, with him coming in, opening the door and him looking scared, but uh, pretend it's Dobby and Charnetsky instead. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. So. So, yeah. So he's got this monster problem at home. Now, Mr. Garvey thinks it's like, you know, something obviously that he's like putting in place of that or like well, he, he draws how he too. copes yeah so so he goes to him uh, at recess the next day he's inside he's drawing these pictures and he has a picture of the fucking monster and that's why he's like oh well you know that's not real and blah 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 and walter says to him well if i draw a picture the little girl behind me told me if i draw pictures of things that hurt me i can hurt them i can like destroy them or burn them up and it'll get rid of them right so he has a picture of the monster and he has a picture of tyrone so they have this back and forth, and and Mr. Garvey's like, look, you shouldn't be drawing pictures of this shit. Like, we should actually talk about it. I want to talk with your mother, so let's set something up. Right, exactly. I'm going to come over tonight. After this conversation, uh, Walter, like, crumples up the picture of Tyrone, and you just hear, like, all these bones breaking, and this kid <laughs> screams, and it cuts to this fucking kid getting put on an ambulance. His fucking arms and legs are broken. They're like, he fell down the stairs, but I don't understand how both his legs and both his arms broke. What are the coincidences? <laughs> What are the odds? Yeah, it's, it's fucking weird. Meanwhile, uh, you're sitting there like, huh? Yeah, that was weird. Again, he's a mutant. FYI. Yeah. So, For some reason. <laughs> so Mr. Garvey goes to the house that night. Right. And he gets there and um, he's talking to mom. And he's basically like, look, Walter's, you know, I want to know what's going on with Walter. Because, like, he's coming into school with, like, bruises on him and a black eye and shit. Right. And he's talking about this monster that lives at home. Now, when he first talks to her, she, she's like, oh, it's Miss uh, whatever. Not Miss. Right, right. And he's like, oh, my dad's dead. That's what he said before. And um, so he doesn't think that there's anybody no, else why, in the why house. Why would he? Yeah. So he's really confused. So they're talking and Walter comes in and she's like, what? what's all of this monster shit? Like, stop with the monster stuff, blah, blah, blah. Go to your room. You hear the car horn honk outside. And you're like, huh? And you're like, who the fuck is that? Because mom is like, oh shit. And he's like, mm, what's going on? So she's like, she's like, stay here, you know, be quiet. She goes out front, and uh, David Allen Greer of all people <laughs> walks through the door. Who, who like is from In Living Coloring stuff? If you guys have seen, yeah, it. Like, blank, blank man, of blank, course. blank man, Jumanji. Yeah, he's a comedian. So one uh, of the goats, I would argue. Yeah, uh, yeah, but in this, he's very serious, and he plays yes. a real piece of shit. So he comes in, and he's like. He's like, oh, you know, you're fucking, uh, you know, why didn't you open the door for me or whatever? He's like, who's here? Teacher's here. 
So he comes in and he's talking and he's like, oh, you know, something's wrong with Walter. You know, like he he's, keeps talking. There is an issue with Walter. You know, can we talk about it? And he's basically like, oh, Walter keeps saying there's this monster and he's got bruises on him and shit. And by the way, like he drew this picture of it. Like, I don't know what the fuck's going yeah. on. Yeah. And also there's like kind of like while he's saying that, like the teacher's not reading the room. Yeah. Because the mom is just kind of like. Clearly, like trying to get him to not say what he's saying based on like she's like, well, uh, nah, well, uh, yeah, because yeah, she knows like when he finishes what he says, <laughs> that just means Walter's going to get his ass whipped. Yeah, because this teacher has good intentions, but doesn't realize that dad's like, oh, he's doing this at school. Oh, yeah. he's he's drawing me as a monster. Oh, hell no. Ugh. You know, literally. So they get him. So he tells him to leave. Yeah. And he leaves. Get the fuck out of my house. Yeah. Walter's in his room and you hear like the monster coming up the stairs. So now it's all clicking. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. But when he opens the door, he's got the fucking like monster hand, Wh- which I'm still thinking he turns into one at this I, point. I, I think you know? so. Or I think so. But right? I guess it's the, the, the literal just the he figurative. Like, he like rolls off his sleeves and it like it says like monster on his arm, like a tattoo. Yeah. Like he's yeah. a real piece of shit. Like as the teachers leave and he's already rolling him up. So, yeah. you know, so he's, he's about to whip some ass. But when he walks in, Walter, you, you see the silhouette of his head and it's like a big monster. Big monster. Head. Yeah, I like that. And he goes up to he goes up to Walter. And he's like, oh, you little monster. The fucker, he's like you like drawing fucked up pictures of people, and then he starts beating the kid. He like picks him up and puts him against a wall. He's doing like one of these. He's doing like a fucking press. He fu- mom. fucking fucking mom, mom striking. Him. Mom comes in and David Ellinger beats the shit out of with her. A belt punches her in the face and then beats her with like a belt. It's really like it's brutal. It's impactful, man. Uh, Gar- Garvey, he's kind of just like getting like his shit together in the car before he leaves, and he, he sees David it. Allen Greer beating well, right. the shit out of her in the in the window. So he runs back in and he tries to help, but he just gets his ass kicked too. He fucking goes to fight David Allen Greer, and David Allen Greer beats the shit out of him. Well, then thank God Walter finally comes up with a bright idea. <laughs> so he and has the picture yeah, the of the monster. This is brutal. <laughs> So starts folding this motherfucker so up like origami. He, he's about to hit mom with a fucking frying pan. Oh, and yeah. And he folds his arm and it like breaks backwards. Now, this is the screaming mad George stuff. It like oh, breaks backwards yeah. and like I Walter like twists him and his whole fucking body twists yeah, the around. paper. Yeah, it's great. Fucking squishes him and he's just like a broken mess of shit on the ground. It's like a blob. <laughs> mom steps on it. Oh, uh, on and, the like, paper a, to finish him off. A yeah. Spray of blood happens. <laughs> and they, uh, and uh, Mr. Garvey's like, all right. He's like, all right, Walter, you know what to do. And they fucking burn the picture on the stove. Because they're like, how the fuck are we going to clean this up? Yeah. And like, and like David Allen Greer goes up in flames. Yeah. And then yeah, we- screaming the whole time. <laughs> and then we cut back to the fucking charred shit remains in the right. cough, in uh, the casket. Then that's what that is. Blake man's brother. Walter, Walter beat the monster. I, mean, I I do think this literally is the same character from Blank Man. You know, he was trying to get with that reporter woman in the movie, but Blank Man does his brother, who he considers to be just like an idiot savant. And he's like so upset. He just like goes off the deep end into like alcoholism and just like gets married and just turns into this mo- this massive piece of his shit monster. beating his kid. Yeah, yeah. All because of Blank Man. Oh, man, that's a fuck. He didn't have grandma to watch over him anymore. That's a, that's a dark turn for him, right? Let's hope that there there's a better uh, split timeline for old David. I, I, I hope somewhere so. Somewhere in the movie dumpster universe. I hope so. What, what do you think of this one? Um, I like this one less, but I feel like the message is very good in this one, especially yeah. like the intensity is really ratcheted up on this one, too. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, it, it's more just like the impact of it, like the, the shock, I guess, if you will. Uh. uh is is what makes this one, but I think overall it's just kind of like, eh. Yeah. It's more fucked up than anything for me. It doesn't really, like, as a whole, like, jump out at me. It's just the, the situation is messed up, but I'm not like, eh, as far as an anthology goes, I'm like, eh, it's okay. I think this one resonates with me a lot. Um, like, especially on the kid's side and, like, being mm. exposed to shit like that. Maybe not that extreme. Right. But, like, it's a scary thing as a kid. And and kind of dealing with that, uh, the fallout of that um, or being in that situation. And, sure. and I think it highlights, you know, domestic abuse on the whole. And like, if you've known anybody like that or experienced something like that, like that, it's fucking terrifying. Oh, yeah. And to see it portrayed that way is kind of brilliant the way they do it with like the monster stuff. But like. It's also great, too, because, again, they work in that fucking supernatural element with like this voodoo kind of thing where it's like, you know, you draw a picture of something and you could destroy it. Which yeah. I kind of love. I love that angle of it. Um, and 
just the fucking the ending of it is so good when he yeah. folds up the fucking paper and he, David Allen Greer just turns into shit and breaks apart. It's fucking great. I, I guess the most like creep showy or 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 tales from the crypty kind of thing is that he just has random voodoo or or uh, superpowers, if you will. Well, you know, in with general, the folding the paper. I think but... it's I think it's power of intention. Really, okay, yeah, is what, yeah, is yeah. what that comes down to. And to see David Allen Greer play a serious yeah, role, that, not that, only a serious and a and, and like a, a kind of a dark role. Yeah, not even yeah, not even, not even just kind of. It is a dark. Not role. even just serious, but like this real mean piece of shit. Like, oh yeah, ugly fucking person. Um, it is kind of a twist. And I think it's kind of like a, a triumph for him, just like as an actor, because he's always doing like comedy shit. Um, but yeah, and then we're we're I I I I think this one is good too. I think I like this one better than the first one. Oh, okay, yeah, I could see it. Yeah, so we're back in Sims funeral parlor. <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, again now now I feel like they start pulling the guns out because they're like, all right, man. Where's the fucking money? Stop. Or, or where are the drugs? We got the money. Come where's on, the, man. Where is the shit? Where yeah. is the proverbial yeah. shit? The shit. Well, hold on. I have another story for you. Well, they like they, they like shut the casket and yeah. the doll falls off the thing. He's like, motherfucker, you play with dolls and shit too. And he's like, yes. Um, that doll I found in a house. And you want to hear the story about it? And they're like, motherfucker, no. And he's like, well, I'm gonna tell you. Anyway. I'm gonna tell you anyway. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, and then we go into this next one. This uh, one, this one's called KKK comeuppance. Yes, uh, we have this literal David Duke stand in. Uh, but he is his name is Duke Duke Met- Metger Duke Metger, yeah, uh, a former KKK guy who's running as a politician for mayor. Uh, he's like, a, yeah, or governor or something. He's like a something governor like or something. That. Who is a literal former fucking clan do, member? Do you think he know he knows uh, Bo Gums? Probably friends with him. I think Bo Gums had a little bit more. Uh, uh, sympathy than this fucking guy. a little bit more tact yeah a little bit more tact uh too. yeah this guy is that stereotype he is that guy that that racist that everyone sees on tv or reads about in the in the local paper uh that is that is everybody hates yes he moves into the fucking historic plantation yeah and doesn't care what the locals think part of his camp uh, so like this story derived from like there was a campaign running at the time i forget who who was doing it but it was like basically like oh the minorities are taking your jobs and blah 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 like it sure. was a campaign that like was r- like a real actual <laughs> oh, campaign, doesn't shock me which no. is fucked up so they were just like Bloop, we're gonna take that and pop this in but yeah like you said to add insult to injury this fucking guy moves into a plantation house yeah. where like the guy who used to the plantation owner that used to own it when the slaves were set free he went fucking ballistic and killed over like a hundred of them and like lynched them and shot them oh, and yeah. hung them and did all this horrible shit because because if he couldn't have them they couldn't be free kind of crazy yeah. bullshit so um then after that all happened the souls of the slaves and stuff kind of stayed in the house and this voodoo priestess or something or this woman who was involved with voodoo like this older woman moved in and like carved these dolls miss Cobbs, miss Cobbs, in and it put uh the souls of these um slaves into these dolls that she made and they kind of protect the house and they kind of call it the doll house yeah. kind, now, of, kind of like a toulon situation a yeah it's bit. like a puppet master kind, a of, bit. kind of deal um uh but uh, with a lot more revenge kind of uh, embedded into it right from the get-go yeah. not in the third or fourth sequel art evans is there to give us yes, the lord the yes. lord dump um and that telling him that telling duke that he needs to move the fuck out because those <laughs> dolls are going to kill his ass he sees the fucking reporter yeah he bum rushes them to get on camera like <laughs> that guy's racist <laughs> yeah he's a piece of shit yeah well he's got the confederate flag hanging all over the place too well there's like there's like protesters outside oh, the yeah. house and he's like, oh, I got to get all these black people off the lawn wow. and all this shit. It's like, it's, yeah. We, yeah well, he, and he's basically doing like practice in his speeches and whatnot with his like, uh, I, I guess he's like his campaign manager or something to that. Who's effect. also a black guy. And the irony of like this black guy helping this piece of shit dude and like telling him, like also, telling him what he should say to like also, reporters and Also stuff. being racist at the same time. Yeah. Well, he, well, fuck that guy. He's the first one to go because like. They're told that this place is cursed or has something wrong with it and yeah. with dolls or ghosts or something to that yeah. effect. Like, ah, we don't care. Whatever. We're going to repaint it all anyway. Oh, yeah, because there's a mural of yes. Miss Cobbs and the and the um, all the, the dolls. dolls, like 50 of them. It's great. Um, yeah. But like you were saying, they're doing they're like going through campaign speeches and, and recording and it. recording filming it rather. Yeah. And. 
his campaign manager's like, no, 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 you can't, you can't say that. Uh, you're too defensive, and that's totally a racist thing to say. Yeah. So he like says it the way he should say it, and he's like, yeah, record me. <laughs> this guy backs up towards the backs staircase. up towards the stairs and fucking falls down the stairs and ends up like breaking his neck and like his head splits open. But. Did he fall or was he pushed, Joe? I don't know. We'll find out soon enough. Well, those eagle-eyed viewers might have already figured it out. <laughs> I caught it. Did you? Yeah, no, I did. Did you stop and rewind it? Not that time. Did you do a fucking ten and break? This, well, that was deep red. Oh, deep but red. I guess excuse you, me. You could also do it in ten and break for sure. <laughs> Ruin the movie for Ruin yourself. Ruin the movie for yourself. Yeah, so we're at the funeral of this guy. Everybody's there. Everybody's there and like... Duke's making some bullshit fucking like speech and like why yeah. why he's it's okay that he's staying at the plantation house stuff. He's like, well, trying to justify I didn't it. do it. It wasn't my ancestors right. just because I'm white or whatever. And it's like, bro, you're missing the point. Again, you, he's a former KKK guy. He you, doesn't care. You were in the clan and yeah. you're a fucking scumbag and you're literally just doing this to be a piece of yeah. shit. Yeah. So he gets in his limo. And one of the fucking dolls is in the limo. Yes. Oh, I want to preface it with the fact that Duke tells the story about the dolls and oh, the voodoo well, right, lady. Yeah. And he was like trying to look around the house for these dolls because he wanted to like sell them or yeah, something. Yeah, he's like, oh, I was trying to sell them and see if they were worth something. Yeah. I love the shot too because it like pans down and he couldn't find them, but it's under the floorboards. Yes. Yes. And it's fucking great. And it's creepy as fuck. By the way, the Kyoto brothers designing these dolls and doing stop motion and stuff they're fucking frightening and coupled with christopher young's score with like that violin it's almost had this twilight zone the movie quality to sure it. sure I, it freaked me out as a fucking kid uh and, and then of course this guy is just using every curse word and racist you know phrase under the sun whenever he can to complain about you know black and brown people yeah so he throws uh, his fucking doll out the window. Yes, right, right. Of the right. limo. And he's like, how dare you put this in here? Who let this person in here to bring this doll in here? And the driver's like, it's a black driver, by the way. Well, right, yeah. exactly. So he's just like, nobody. Like, nobody was in the fucking yeah. car, man. Shut up. Throws it out there. So he goes home. Well, now he notices, like, the painting on the wall. The one that he saw is now, like, missing from the it's painting. Like, there's, like, a white spot where yeah. it was. And it was, like, like an outlap in the painting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we get like this Chucky vision of this doll yeah. like running back to the house. This is some of the creepiest shit in this movie. Okay. The doll runs up to the house and dude is like chilling, having a drink or whatever. And he hears a knock at the door and he's like, oh, whatever. So he was expecting somebody. So he yeah, goes yeah. to the door, he opens it up. There's nobody there. You hear the pitter patter. And you hear the fucking little footsteps run through, man. And I'll tell you what. I don't care how many times I fucking see it in a killer doll movie. Sure. It's always effective. No, I agree. I agree. You don't even see it. You just hear it. And it's fucking like it's like what? it's bone chilling. Scares the shit out of Duke. He grabs the double barrel. Oh, man. Yeah. And uh, he turns around. He locks the door and turns around. And the fucking thing is sitting on the stairs. Dude, I, I forget if it's right here or if it's a little bit further out, but he fucking starts unloading on this fucking <laughs> well, doll. Well, <laughs> no, it's sitting on the stairs and he's like, he's like, motherfucking fucker. And he picks up this vase, oh, the vase yeah. and he throws it at it and it disappears. Right, and he like right. freaks out and runs into the room with the painting and takes the American flag and hits Mrs. Cobb's painting in the face like three times and it starts bleeding. Yeah. It's fucking creepy as hell. They did also show it earlier where it was kind of the eyeballs were in different like positions. Like looking around or yeah. like smirking or whatever. Definitely like a haunted mansion kind of thing. So he goes looking all over the house for this fucking thing and it's it's really, you know, you hear the pitter patter it's really creepy. He's tearing the fucking place apart. Yep. So after he hits the painting, this thing like swings on a chandelier and like bites the shit out of his neck and is like tearing right. him up. Right, right. And he like throws it down and he hits it with the fucking flag. Right. So he ends up tacking it to a dartboard outside. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he like tacks it up and he's like, I'm going to blow your little balls off. Right. And then he shoots it with the shotgun and like fucks it up. Like half Big of the time. head explodes and all this it's shit. It's like Chucky at the end of the first child's yeah. play when it gets blown up. <laughs> His head? Oh, well, yeah, yeah kind of. Uh, and then he just thinks that's the end of it. There's not 50 more of those things in the painting to worry about. Absolutely not. Man. Walks in. There's four more missing there's in the like painting. Four more missing. He's, he's like, ah, shit. He fucking goes back out into the into the parlor, and uh, 
the the fucking doll that he shot is now like standing in the doorway <laughs> with its in like fixing like, its head. And the stop motion here is so fucking yeah. good. It runs after him and he like runs back into his office, but he goes to close the door. This thing, fucking thing like jumps and like pushes yeah. the door open. So it has like the strength of like a man. Well, again, and that's the thing a lot with it's those like the souls of, of the slaves. Yeah. Like again, like Chucky, where it's yeah. just like this. It, it, just because it's a little doll, it has like the power of a man. Yeah, well, it has the the whole soul of yeah. a of a slave in it. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, but they're also like the other ones are in the room with them already, so it doesn't uh, matter. Now all of the dolls are out of the painting. Oh yeah, yeah. Like and more than like like there's like maybe twenty or thirty or forty or whatever in the painting, but there's like fifty or sixty of these fucking pe- like dolls man surrounding him again. Like, I, a cavalcade of them. I cannot stress the fact that the Kyoto's like did such a great job. With like making all these little well, dolls, they're like the masters of making like multiple things. Well, unique. well, but I think they're one of the best little rubber monster oh, that's and what I'm or stop motion animators like ever. Because um, each one of these dolls, at least that they focus on, yeah. have something different about them, something yeah. unique about them. And they're all in different clothes and yeah. stuff. Um, so there was going to be a different ending here. Okay, so you know how the dolls like start to close in. And he has like the flag and he's like, oh, and he's screaming. It was going to cut there. It was going to cut there. And they were going to people were going to find him the next morning hung from a fucking tree with the American flag. (laughs) Like in front of the house. Don't hate that, actually. But I kind of like what we got. It didn't like play well to audiences or whatever. And the studio was like, hey, we want to see it. I guess. Well, they want to see they wanted to see the dolls go after him. Well, they we definitely got that. So the the that last part, the ending of this, all that was like insert shots. So they went back and like the Kyoto's came back and like animated all them all like jumping all over him and like fucking biting. Dude, they're just straight up zombie attacking this guy. They are biting chunks out of him and like ripping his flesh off. It's like Willow or some shit with those that army of rats. fucking people, you know. Yeah, it's it's great. It's, it's it's really good. It is, and then I love how it's this granny Van Dam fu- ass woman fucking appears in the <laughs> wheelchair. She comes out of the painting, or the, or the too. rocking chair. I mean, her and Vigo, they yeah. come out of the oh, painting. Yeah, they're hanging out. Yeah, she's, she my ties together. <laughs> <laughs> she's rocking in the chair, and uh, she's just smiling as this fucking guy gets devoured by these dolls. It, it's awesome. It's really good. Uh I like this one a lot. It's, it's great. It's just some racist piece of shit. Uh, much like the first one, I guess maybe maybe that's my theme so far with yeah. this is just like people getting what they deserve. That's the whole point. I mean, yeah. that's the tales. Well, that's yeah, the tales exactly, from the uh, you know, crypt mo, dude. The EC uh, uh, coat of paint. The, yes, and uh, it's glorious. And uh, I I can't really say much else. It's a really good one. This is my favorite. Okay, I really like this one because well, the dolls, the dolls, the killer yeah. fucking dolls, man. I I love it. They're creepy. I love the they, pra- they, they kind of that, like that realism to them too, yeah. like the faces. The practical effects are really fucking cool. I love this fucking. I love how you fret. I I love how Rusty and Darren have freshened up the killer doll thing mm. by like adding this whole another layer to it, where it's like you know the dead soul, the souls of these slaves are like in these little killer dolls. And like, this guy's a racist piece of shit and he totally gets his comeuppance. But like, he's also like, not, I don't want to say likable, but like, I enjoy watching him deal with these. Yeah. Deal no, with them. Yeah. And then like, and then, you know, get fucking, I mean, eaten, he's also going out of his way to like purposely living at this plantation, yeah. not caring about like how the locals feel about it. Yeah. So it's like, asshole being an asshole on top of being an asshole you know kind of thing it just it's just a it's a very i don't know it this one just feels the most to me like a a crypt sure and i and i really enjoy it i don't know i i think it's the dolls (laughs) i really like the effects they're really good good. the more i'm thinking about it as you're saying it it might be my favorite but let's talk about the last one first but yeah yeah so we're back in the parlor again we're walking around finally we get to the one of the last rooms of the house. Yes. And now they're not really having any of it, man. They're fucking pissed off. They want- Again, they've been walking around for an hour as far as the yeah. run time's concerned. And they're like, what the fuck? And he, he's like, we want the shit right now. Give it to us. So they pull the fucking yeah, guns, the guns out. out now. Shit. But they open the casket. They're like, well, what about this fucking guy? And they all fucking like go white because they're just like. We know that fucking guy. He's like, he's a friend of yours. You know him? He's like, yeah, we know him. He's like, no, we don't fucking know him and all this stuff. Right. Um, And then we get the last story. Yes. Which is Hardcore Convert. Now, this is uh, kind of an interesting one. So we we kick this one off where this guy, Crazy K. Crazy K. Who is, is, who is the guy in the, in the casket? Yes. 
Lamont Bentley, by the way, okay. he was uh, well, who was he? He was uh, he was Hakeem Campbell on Moesha for oh, like okay. the whole se- <laughs> series, and that. <laughs> that character is a completely opposite oh, of who okay. he plays in this movie. Well, in this one, he's chasing down his rival, yeah. Little Deke. Yeah. He sees his car. He's like, oh, I this know that car fucker, anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Fucking goes up to him. This guy gets out of his car, like trying to walk into his house. And this guy just gets out. Crazy K and just starts shooting him. <laughs> yeah. You didn't think I saw you. Boom, boom, boom. Blows him away. Little Deke. Like what? What's up, man? What are you doing? I, I can't even fucking see. And I, I, and he's like, like and you know what you did, motherfucker. He's like, I don't even know who you are, and he's just shooting yeah. the shit out of him. And so then, Crazy K, like, I don't know what he was thinking. Like, he was just gonna leave. Also, he has a KK, you know, shaved into his head. Yeah, it's Crazy K. Yeah. And, and then just the guy's boys come out and they just like start beating the shit out of him. They and fucking shoot him, him in his chest. Yeah. And he's like, oh, 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 like bleeding out of the mouth, barely alive. <laughs> he falls to the ground and they're like question him and shit he's like you want you know you want to shoot you in the fucking head or the chest and blah 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 the fucking cops roll up and they got him surrounded and like they start and then they shoot the three boy the three guys yeah 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 and they as they, they're running away as they're running away they shoot him so crazy k is picked up and taken right because he barely survives yeah so we're gonna put him in the nemesis program <laughs> Helen a bottom part there. They're gonna make to it there. there. Yeah, they're gonna Sam turn him into a fucking Terminator. Yeah, before Sam Worthington accepted, they had to ask other people to be sure. Uh, yeah, this guy for he's been there for four years. He's recovered. He's in great shape. Yeah. and they want to make him a machine or yeah. something. Doctor Cushing wants to make yeah. him wants to rehabilitate him. Uh, Rosalind Cash, by the way, yes, who I believe was in. I forget the movie, but I remember her from um, A Different World, that yes. Cosby Show spinoff. Yep. Yeah. She's in a bunch of stuff. Oh, Def- Omega. She's in Omega Man. Oh, okay. There yeah. you go. Definitely a lot of stuff around that time I was reading. Yeah. Uh, or like 70s, 80s, too, yeah. especially. Also, just a morbid thing of, of coincidence in real life. Uh, Lamont and, um, and Rosalind died the same year after making this. Oh, wow. She passed away from cancer and he was in a car crash. Oh, my God. So I just thought that was like really strange. Um, It is. Yeah. And and basically the whole thing is that she says to him, well, you're going to be in solitary confinement for the rest of your life because you were just this like crazy fucking criminal who just like killed people for no reason. Or you could do this experiment and whether it succeeds or not, well, we'll let you go, let you free. Yeah, she gives him like a glimmer of hope that he can get out. And, and it's like this experimental rehabilitation. But she doesn't even like really give him an option. No. He's just like thinking about it still. And she's like fucking sticking tubes up his nose. Like, ah! when, like, they, when they take him to this fucking place, it's like the Hellraiser 2 Hell World. Like yeah. mixed with like Koopa Tower and Koopa City. I think this is what fucking Keanu Reeves woke up in in the Matrix. Oh, that pod. They fucking strap him into this like device, this clockwork orange ass fucking yeah. device where they like jam a tube up his nose like you were saying and like a ball in his mouth that like shoots this green liquid in it. Yeah. And then like this fucking eye this thing. This VR thing? Yeah. And it's basically like a like a brainwashing technique. Well, wow, it's like they're showing him what he's done almost Man, it feels like. This like, hey, look at all this fucked up shit you did. Why'd you like keep showing people getting shot? Th- this is and like this these like gang war kind of like yeah, footage. But like all of that is like fake. And it's like mm. black on black crime, basically. Well, that's a lot of the message and, on but, this one in particular. But what's really scary about this scene is like flashes of these black and white photos of like real clan oh, yeah. and stuff of like actual uh African American people like getting fucking hung from yes. trees and shit, which is terrifying and disgusting. And it's just like I've never seen anything like that. Well, right, in a movie. In yeah, a, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, like, yeah. Like like this is like that's why I was I, I had said on like the live show, like, this is like a black horror movie mm. that I've I've never seen anything like this. You know what I mean? And for them to put that in this part specifically and like basically show him the error of his ways or and, like, and like look what you're doing like you like you've been oppressed for so for, like our race has been like so oppressed and like you're you're taking out our own people you're taking basically. out your own your own people you yeah, know? yeah 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 just, just to be part of the gang life or whatever and yeah, like it just I doesn't guess. make any fucking sense and like you're just a fucking piece of shit yeah 
So then they 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 put him in solitary a uh, dep a, a sensory deprivation. Right, thing. right, right, right. They like lower him down in this fucking chair. <laughs> it's like fucking Ollie. Yeah, but he's in his underwear by the whole time. By yeah, the well, way, you know they got to show off that package with his fucking donger poking yeah. out. Yeah. So he's in the sens sensory deprivation chamber, which is just basically like this like wooden room that's like lower down to the ground, like yeah. in a basement almost. Yeah. Uh, below sea level, I guess, is the idea. I don't know. <laughs> they, anyway, he just, just starts, like, fucking he just starts seeing shit. She's like, you're not going to see here or, or, or be able to do anything. Second he goes down there, a huge light comes on, and then the like, ghosts start coming out. And it's like, yeah, we're the people you killed. Uh, some of us were bad. Some of us were just like you know, bystanders. And there's like a little girl there's, and like an like, old woman yeah, and stuff like, like that. there's a strobing effect. And the, it, because... There's like layers to it, right? Sure. Because he's like, he's like, I was your boy. Like, where the fuck did you shoot me? And he's like, you always coming up short. So, like, so fuck you, motherfucker. Right. Yeah. I'm not gonna give you a reason. I just shot you. Yeah. And like these other guys are like, we didn't even kill your 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 boy. Like, why'd you shoot us? And he's it. like, fuck you, motherfuckers. Get out of here. Then yeah. this little girl shows up, and she's like, I wasn't doing anything. Like, I was just playing in my room, and you shot a bullet came through my window and you killed me. And he's like, he's like, a bullet ain't got no name, and blah blah blah. Well, because his whole thing is he doesn't take responsibility no. for his actions, no. even when they're presented to him in this way. No. And I guess, you know, there's obviously some supernatural element to this, because, again, this is a tales thing uh, with him seeing these 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 ghosts. I'll, I'll just refer to them as. But Dr. Cushing's like, you don't feel any remorse like you don't like, feel like this was your responsibility. And he's like, the only, the only responsibility I have is myself. Yeah. My actions aren't my responsibility. That's not my problem. And she's like. You're fucking blowing it. You're missing the point. I know. And what what really fucking threw me for a loop is we didn't mention it, but yeah, like sure. when she puts him when she when they first bring him in and like put him in the in the cage oh, next yeah. to that fucking white supremacist guy. Oh yeah. And he's like like he, testing him. Yeah. Well, and she in did some it on respect. She, she did it on purpose. And yeah. this fuck this actor is fucking amazing. Yeah. By the way, right before he gets onto the slab, when right he's just in the. Solitary confinement. There's yeah. like an in between. You're right. Where there's where he's in like those cages that kind of look like the cages they're in in Super Mario. Oh, Toad Brothers. is right above him playing the fucking <laughs> harmonica, dude. Yeah, like I said, it's Koopa City and, and the fucking Hell it World. It could be, but you're right. That's a powerful scene so, with the racist Nazi guy. It really, it really hits home because it's like here's this fucking racist piece of shit, like talking about like exterminating like all the black people and like all this stuff, and he's like building an army, and he's like, we're gonna save some of you so you can be slaves for us or whatever. And he's like, you want to be on our side? And he fucking punches this guy in the mouth. But then he's like, he's like, yeah, you killed people. He's like, what color were the people you killed? And he's like, they were black, weren't they? And he's like, you're you're cool with me or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, fuck, dude. Like, do you like just from that uh, uh, experience that that altercation that he just had, like, didn't open your fucking eyes at all? And then like now back in the century deprivation yeah, well, right, chamber, yeah. he's like. Uh, the doc is like, uh, oh, what are you going to blame your mom? You're going to blame your dad? You're going to blame the school? And he does. And he's like, yeah, it's all their fault. That's why I'm a fucking scumbag. And like, yeah. fuck you. Like, I'm not going to change. Yeah. So, someone that's not going to be rehabilitated. No. Also, I guess is part of it, too. Um, And they're just like, all right, well, fine. And he's like, yeah, I don't fucking want this. I don't fucking want this. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. And then like. It flashes I don't back. give a fuck. I don't give says. a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. It flashes back and he's back on the street. Yeah, basically because again, bleeding out supernatural bullshit because it's still it's one of those kind of movies. Yeah. And it's like, well, if you don't give a fuck, we're taking this all back. You're back where you just yeah. were, motherfucker. And yeah, like Joe just said, it's he, almost like some kind of weird Scrooge. That, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And he's saying, oh, I don't give a fuck. And, and now in the response to where are we going to shoot you? Yeah. Oh, you don't give a fuck. Boom. They fucking blow they them fucking away. Every light them up, dude. <laughs> they light them up. And, and then you you find out uh, that, well, these aren't just some shadowy figures. No. Which I, is is very smart with the way that this is lit. With and you could figure you know, it out, but we didn't, we didn't want to give it give it away until right now. Yeah, but it's like that 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 worm eye view, like from the ground yeah. up. So yeah. it's like the light behind them. It's cool. And their voices are kind of altered a little bit. Yeah. But it is our our three characters that are here with Mr. Sims. Again, Sack, Bulldog, and Ball, or whatever the fuck yeah. they're here. Ball Sack. And they're <laughs> the three stack. Stroke. stack. Stack. I even call him Sack the whole episode. <laughs> So what do you think of Hardcore Convert? I like that one a lot. I don't know. I think because it works with the wraparound, it, it like works a little better for me, like like all together. 
might not be my favorite. It might actually be the one prior to that. Yeah. The, uh, the, with the dolls. The, doll that, like, the more ones, I'm thinking yeah. about it. But this one was kind of fun, especially like the whole thing of like, oh, you were so fucking hard and you just basically down to just the final minute you would never let go and you're going to just never going to like take responsibility for your actions. So fuck you too, I guess. And then you're like, well, I guess you're dead. That's, <laughs> that's such like a powerful thing too, because like the way that wraps up, like he learned nothing. I yeah. Guess he learned point. nothing. And Sims was like, yeah, some people just can't be reasoned with. And like some people won't change. Right. And, and you just got to fucking kill them. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, that's such a, it's such a sad ending to that one because there's a lot of people that do fucked up shit all the time or like don't again, don't take accountability for their actions, live life, it ruin people's fucking lives and don't even fucking it doesn't even bother them yeah. at night. Well, look, you know? look at look at the first one with Clarence. I mean, we didn't even really talk about that, but like it's heavily implied that he's either just dead because they're in hell like we find out at the end here or he killed himself or something because if he's in that casket and he was in the insane asylum, either way, he didn't make it. No one's safe no. in this movie. No. <laughs> Um, they're all bad people or or at least they're definitely not good people yeah i like this one too it, it's it's not it's it's not even my second favorite but it's 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 good yeah um so they so they, so they they all point their guns at sims because they're like motherfucker you know we killed him right and well, he's like right. i don't give a shit i got drugs i want to sell you yeah, <laughs> or yeah whatever the shit we gotta go get the shit you get the shit and then as they're about to just say, well, fuck it. They go down into a basement. Yeah, he's like, okay, fine. For real, 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 real this time. <laughs> and, he, and they're about to blow him away. Yeah. And he goes into the back and he's like, the shit's in there. In coffins, of course. That's where I'd hide the fucking drugs, stupid. They'll go check it out. And then and then Stackball and, and Bulldog all go up to the coffins. And they open them one at a time. And guess who the fuck's in each coffin? Themselves! Themselves! Oh, no! Whee! Yeah, and then uh, they're just like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, by the way, uh, yeah, after you shot Crazy K, uh, uh, yeah, all his, his boys came and yeah. shot and fucking killed your yeah, ass? Exactly. It wasn't the cops, it was his boys. He's like, uh, "You're." He's like, we're dead? He's like, yep. <laughs> yeah, this, this is fucking hell. Where did you think you were? And he literally transforms into Satan or the devil or something. Uh, before he does well, that. Well, his eyes turn red first. The, the banger. Dude. Well, his eyes turn red and the fucking guns get hot and fall oh, out of his hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, like, yeah. welcome to hell, motherfuckers. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. You have to say that. <laughs> it's like, so Clarence Williams has like a space in his teeth and like a tongue flicks out of it. Oh, yeah, it's kind of great. Uh, and then he turns into this fucking giant, crazy Satan monster. Yeah. Uh, done by Screaming Mad George. Okay. It's weird, man. It's got like this it, long torso with these yeah. big legs. It looks crazy. I George, love how crazy. Screaming Mad George wanted to make it look like a big cancer. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so I, I think I, he I accomplished that was kinda it. Cool, yeah. I love how then they're just like surrounded by fire. Like, oh! Yeah, they're like burning in hell. And it looks, the fire looks a little dodgy, but like I, th I still I think, think it, it works. works for the scene. Yeah. 100%. Uh, so yeah, that's Tales from the Hood. Is this on the shelf or in the dumpster? Uh, this is definitely on the shelf. Yeah. Easy. Uh, every segment's kind of great. I don't have a complaint about any of them. Again, there's like one or two that are a little weaker. But I mean, that first one's amazing. The last one's amazing. The third one's the weakest one's the second one. And it's not even that bad. Uh, and the wraparound's kind of great. Uh, again, like I haven't seen too many wraparounds where they kind of cut back to it. I'm sure it's been done before, but this is one that's very standout-ish. Uh, to have kind of those in between scenes rather than just beginning and end. Yeah. Uh, like a creep show, for example. Well, we do come back to the comic book, but I see what you mean. Yeah, no, that yeah. is true. And I guess creep show too actually does have those in betweens now that I'm saying that. Yeah. Uh, but but they're cool in this. I like it, and like it is kind of fun to poke fun at the fact that they're walking around this funeral home. But when you find <laughs> at the end they've been in hell the whole time, so who cares? It's like, pretty great. There's no real time at, involved at that point te yeah. technically. Uh, it's kind of, yeah, like like you literally just said, it's kind of great. Yeah. Um. Clarence Williams, I think he said his name was, yeah. as as Mr. Sims is awesome and, and brings a lot to this when he didn't really have to for this kind of like bit part. He he's just fantastic. Uh and, and his look with the with the afro puffed out. Yeah, smoking his fucking cigar. Yes, yes, he nailed it. And it's completely suit. eccentric, and I love it. I, it's, it's it's really fun. Um, I kind of like how each one is pieced together where it's like, oh, well, this guy's in a casket. How did he get here? That's kind of an interesting concept overall that I like. Yeah. Uh, and again, like I, I, without sounding like a broken record, I do. I do think they are all good. And I really could just be nitpicky if I wanted to. Yeah. But nothing really falters in here. There's nothing I'm like, 
like there's other anthologies like creep show two, uh like the hitchhiker for example i mean talking about that's com- you know with the same actor and this is kind of funny but that kind of just goes on for way too long yeah. but it's a very good concept just kind of loses me after a while this one none of them lost me uh they all kind of like kept my attention from beginning to end i was ready for the next one by the time it was coming but i wasn't feeling like let's get to it yeah uh so very well done we we'll definitely watch it again, and I don't know why I waited so long, but I'm glad we covered it on this show so I can finally cross it off my list. Hell yeah, man. And if you don't have it, you should pick up the, I'm gonna uh, have to. the, the Shout Factory uh, Blu-ray. It's I'm a, going It's a beautiful to. transfer. Um, yeah, this is definitely on the shelf for me big time. Um, I grew up with this movie, mm-hmm. um, and watching it now and actually talk about it and reviewing it um, has given me a, a more of appreciation for it. Cause some of the stuff, like I understood what was going on yeah. when I was younger, but like to really get the full scope of like the, uh, the integration of, of uh, what they wanted to say on like a political level and like social commentary level um, is really well done. Like, yeah, I didn't like, even comment on that. That's a, that's a good point. That, that kind of, really elevates it as yeah, a whole. Yeah, and that's my favorite kind of horror mm. is when you can have a, a really solid message like that and then put that fucking supernatural stank on it or whatever it is. Because um, I I mean, I've said that for years. I, I Which I think is just common sense when you're making well, a movie yeah. is to like, you need, the base needs to be strong. It has to have legs. Right, it and, crumbles otherwise. And the way that this gives it legs is... Uh, problems in the black community, uh, hardships that they were facing, uh, domestic abuse, which affects kind of everybody so that you can relate on that level. Um, the the inherent racism that's like been ra- that was rampant uh, at a t- at one time and even still is going on in the current yeah. issues and all that bullshit. It all that hasn't gone away, unfortunately. No, unfortunately not. But my point is, it's like it all ties up with it weaves itself through. Yeah. The horror stories being told where the scariest part are those realities. Well, exactly. You know what exactly. I mean? We're we are the monsters, you know, and and I think that I think that's always makes for the best kind of story. True. Um, because, the, you know, there are no real monsters except us. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know no, what I yeah, mean? Like, right. that's what you should be scared of. It's not a guy with a green arm coming out of a yeah, closet. Yeah, not, yeah. Yeah, not the fucking creature that lives under your bed. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um. As an anthology, it's fucking solid as hell. Oh, yeah. Like from top to bottom, it's fucking beautiful. And for a black horror movie, from what I've seen, sure, this takes the fucking taco. I mean, it is just it, it again. It's like it's fucking beautiful. And uh, uh, Rusty and Darren knew exactly what they were making, and they're fans of the genre and fans of um, anthology movies in general and can put that urban spin on it and work weave all that stuff in and i think it's fucking done brilliantly and uh again clarence williams is fucking great everybody's really good in this it's it's so weird to see david ellen greer in in this kind of role yeah um there is comedy in this and i appreciate it um but it also gets very scary and very real at other points too so it kind of it kind of yeah. navigates the up and down way less comedy in this compared to like a creep show for sure but it, it is it, it is there yeah you know? no for sure but it's it's supposed to be yeah you know? sure. and, and again like like dude in um and my, my my favorite story by the way my favorite story is uh the kkk come up it's with the puppet mm. with the with the dolls um but again like that guy duke is like so fucking over the top that it's yeah. like it's it's laughable like he's a piece of shit but y- you can also laugh at it right now I, I get what you're saying do you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah, yeah, and i don't mean so that over in, the top yeah i don't mean in like a in like a, a negative way um but um yeah uh, they're all solid stories but again you know the uh the uh, the monster one the boys to be bruised one and um the doll one are my favorites um it's really great and I love this movie so much. <laughs> and I'm glad we finally talked about no, it. No, yeah, this was uh, a ton of fun to dive yeah. into. Yeah. So, yeah, before you get out of here, if you're watching on YouTube, do us a favor and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Um, and please share the video with your friends. If you dig it, the best way to do it is word of mouth. Okay? Spread it around town if you're digging it, you know? Spread around that dumpster sauce. Well, spread around that the dumpster juice. Ooh, you little... It's one scoop or two. What do you think? Uh, three. Oh, three. I'm not okay. driving. Oh, that's... <laughs>
<laughs> a little Home Alone 2, bro. Uh, there you I'll go. reference there for you. There you go. And if you listen on your favorite podcast app, don't forget, please leave us a five-star review if you dig the show or whatever that may be, a thumbs up, a fucking, uh, w- whatever, whatever the rating system is, wherever yes. you're listening. And by the way, um, if you're listening on your podcast app, you can, you know, you, you we said it before, there's there's going to be ads now on the uh, the podcast feed. So if you want to get an ad free audio only version of the show, head over to patreon.com slash movie dumpster for two dollars. You get ad free episodes, plus you get mini sods, plus you get junk mails. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah. OK. And we also have five and ten dollar tiers. And five dollar gets you a sticker pack and commentary tracks and live watch alongs. And a ten dollar gets you a t shirt, sticker pack, a pin, live watch alongs, commentary tracks, and all of the stuff from the two dollars here. So you get a you get a lot of goodies. A ton of shit. Support your favorite show. Yes. Movie dumpster. <laughs> Um, but yeah, keep an eye out on Patreon. We're going to have uh, the New Jack City uh, commentary. Yes. We're going to have the Bones mini sode. We're going to have a live watch along of uh, Don't, Don't Be, Be a Menace. Menace to South Central while you're drinking your juice in the hood. And then for those mainline episodes, what do we got coming up? Our next episode coming up is Thriller, A Cruel, a cruel Picture. Oh, yeah. AKA, they call her one eye. Yes. With, uh, we're going to have a special guest for that one, Jenna Fryer. Yes. Back coming on back. the show. It ended the video dungeon for the first time, but she's coming back to the show after that body melt episode, the infamous body melt episode <laughs> from several years back. It's gonna be so cool to have her like in the in the dungeon, like talking yes. to her like in person. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, first guest of the year too, yeah. so a, bit, a little bit of a double whammy. Yeah, that's gonna be a good one. And uh, that movie, if you haven't seen it, watch it in preparation because yes. it's amazing. Pick up, we're gonna be talking about it, but pick up that Vinegar Syndrome uh, rem- uh, remaster. Yes, it's fucking gorgeous. That Blu-ray. Head over there and grab it. Um, we also have the Shin Ultraman right yes. review somewhere. It, if it's not out yet, it's coming. And uh, keep your eyes peeled for the announcement of whatever our live show will be, or our live wrap up for February uh, coming soon. Uh, and then beyond that, we'll see you in March. So that's it. That's Tales from the Hood from 1995, directed by Rusty Cundiff. I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. Thank you.